Alright, so hello and welcome back to another episode of Brave New World Blindfolded. In this episode, well this mini episode before I start actually doing stuff, I get the pleasure of re-equipping all my characters, so that's lots of fun. As you recall, I de-equipped absolutely everyone last time, so... So she gets the Mithril Bolo, because it's all she has, I never really bothered to buy anything else. Because, so far, the weapons haven't been all that important for my money. Iron Shield, because why not? Green Beret, because uh, I just think it makes the most sense on her, and it gives her the HP boost. I'm trying to spread them all out so that everybody has one from something, and it simply makes sense. And... She also gets the Mithril Vest, because the Evasion will stack higher on her than Edgar. Obviously, the other two won't be using the Mithril Vest, so... So now I'm going back to equip Edgar. Mithril Bolo, because obvious. Iron Shield, because obvious. Iron Everything, because obvious. There's just nothing else that I need to do with Edgar. And Switchblade just makes sense. Might as well just equip his strongest weapons. Headband, uh, I'm putting it on him instead of Gao because he'll be actually using the bigger boost. And Ninja Gear because there's no reason to do anything else. And Gao kind of gets left in the dust a little. He can keep the ninja gear, but I'll probably transfer some of the stuff from Celeste onto him for the Opera House, but... Alright, relics. I'm still on Gao. Equip. First slot. One, two, three. Giving him the knight's cape is uh, worth my time because he appreciates the speed, the HP, the extra evasion to keep him alive. The, the white cape is also a pretty decent choice for him because the magic and speed he'll be using. Alright, now let's go up to Edgar. I'm equipping him in a specific order because I, it makes it easier to equip them. So. Edgar gets the sprint shoes because uh, those are really useful on him. He needs the speed boost more than Gao does. And even though Gao needs the evasion boost more. And he also gets the stat stick because he can use pretty much everything. Everything except, well, I suppose the magic points. But. Locks next on my equip list. He gets the uh, power glove because the power glove is an obvious choice for luck when he's my only character who's a dedicated physical fighter in this team. And Locke will also be taking the knight's cape because he'll also like the evasion boost and the HP. Magic Cube for Celeste, because she'll actually want the MP and the Magic Boost. She's the only character who wants the MP, which is why the Magic Cube is going on her in particular. And finally, we're going to give her the Life Bell, because she has the highest stamina right now. There's only one way I can organize my Aspers to actually equip them all, so... Good, just checking. Just checking again because I wasn't sure whether that would leave me. Um, e even if I had more than one choice, though, uh, I definitely uh, like giving Celeste the magic spells like Bolt, especially for the magic facility. Down to Edgar.
Edgar has Siren because there's nothing else. Although I will be getting Golem kind of soon. Luck is cornered into Kirin, but I like the Cure spells on him anyway, so... Actually, I'm not sure if I just failed to equip it. Huh? Where am I now? Okay, yeah, I think I did that properly. Um... And Gao gets Stray. Stamina is nicely appreciated. Oh boy, I can't... That took a really long amount of time. But now it's over, so I'm good. Now for the next part of the segment. Alright, so let's continue on this segment. Oh, and with all the menuing I did last time, I completely forgot to put Cal in the back row. So, kinda gotta do that now. One, two, three, four, five. I suppose the worst thing that could happen on the way back here is what happened in my test run where Gal goes and gets himself confused by Twister and ends up murdering the party and I end up staggering into town with one HP from the poison. Or dying. It would be even worse, obviously. Why did I make it all that way without getting a single battle, or am I messing something up? Oh, not messing something up, I suppose. Alright, so this is Gal. I chose Leafer just because it has a decent damage output. Like, there's nothing too spectacular about it through here. This is Edgar, so I'll just continue with the Bioblaster strat I've been using for a while. And Celeste, so you can defend. Normally I'll just have Celeste attack because it's easier. I have Lock attack the one at the bottom because it's always, uh, fighter guy, and they die to his attack. Huh. New. Unfortunately, I can't attack this thing with my physical attacks, because... Yeah, it's less like I thought. There we go. If I attack him with my physical attacks, it'll throw a bio spell at me, and that's pretty nasty, so I don't want to eat that. It's not nearly as forgiving as the Bane Touch in uh, Mount Colts. One, two, three, four, I kind of have to do that to check. I hear haste spells, so there's n nothing really stopping Celeste from attacking. Really, there's no advantage to Celeste attacking, it's just, it's easier to do. <laughs> because I don't have to determine who's Celeste and who's Edgar that way, I can just hold A. <laughs> Yay, everything's dead. Good work, Edgar. And Gao, I suppose. You know, I could probably actually use Celeste's magic. You know, just saying like I was planning to do. Not that it hardly mattered at this point anyway, considering I'm pretty much there, but... Yeah, it's about as lucky as I could have gotten, to be honest. Well, provided I have enough cash for Golem, which I severely hope I do. 
Shouldn't need to stay in the inn just yet, at least, though. So that'll help me out a little. I probably have enough cash for Golem, but I might not. I gotta sneeze. Hate that. You gotta sneeze and you can't. It's annoying. <laughs> anyway, so this cutscene's fairly easy to navigate. Don't even have to use the menu trick here because things just work out that way. Thankfully, it's easy to avoid naming sets or sets uh, or something like that. Crisis averted. The world is saved. I just had to time that one to the music because it starts up nicely. Not that it really matters. I mean, it wouldn't have much of an impact, but... Alright, so that's the end of that. Well, not really, because there's still one more to tack on. The fun, fun part of going to the auction house when I can't see what I'm doing. I'm gonna buy a whole lot of nothing, I just know it. And... See you in two seconds. Alright, so it's been several hours since I did the last part. This is the super fun auction part. So, yay for that. The best part about this is, I can't even tell what I'm bidding on. So, that means that if I get nothing, I'll purchase it, purchase it for 10,000 bucks and have to restart the segment. So, yay, it's even longer now than it is usually. If it's the imp, at least I can get away with, uh... You know, maybe I should have said this all, like... Before I went in here, because I'm probably just gonna have to redo this. Whatever, I may just stick this part on. Oh, it's the imp. I never really planned for this. Thankfully this happened once during, uh, like, when I was just messing around several hours ago, so... I think I know my way out. I wasn't really memorizing it then, though, so... Yeah, I thought it was that. A chocobo. Yippee. Aren't these ones relatively rare in the World of Balance? I don't really remember. I know that Magicite was made a lot more common, which is going to save my butt seriously. I don't think I'll get me getting Golem or Zone Seek in my low level game unless I really, really need them.
Oh, I can actually tell. That treasure chest opening noise. I never paid attention to it before because I always fast forward through the opera. I mean, opera. Auction. So I've just got to be careful to make sure to select the second option, even on all these ones where there is no second option. I may fast forward this part because I'm sure it's not going to be very interesting for you. I don't usually fast forward the actual portions of the segments because I, I like to show what actually happened as it actually happened because I think it makes more sense that way but in this case I may want to make an extra special exception for this magnitude of boring. At least I can mash my way through the ones with the chocobo and the imp. And I think if I accidentally do buy it, it should at least play a noise for me to, to let me know that I accidentally bought a nothing. Which would be unfortunate because I'd have to ditch this segment. Is this it? I think this is it. Well, I guess it might be an imp too. It's always a possibility, I think. Nice. Alright. That took a little bit less time than I thought it would because, uh... Yeah, I, I didn't have to restart every time. Uh, how did I get stuck? Oh, right. I haven't gotten rid of all the text boxes. Well, that's not going to help, is it? Yeah, I guess it's different getting out from when I got the thing. Oh well, as far as I can tell, this room should funnel me out. actually guessed right on what I had to do. And it was mostly a guess. I don't think I, I really logic that out properly. Thankfully there's just a big gaping hole in the underside of this town which kind of makes it easy to escape it. Now if I could just find the big gaping hole that would be very much appreciated. Okay. I have defeated the auction house. Most difficult beast in the game. Alright. Um. I'm on item. Success. 
and now I have no money left. See you next time.